it is, Will Robertson, of course. Uh, hold on a second. I'm noticing that my uh, studio is uh, sort of losing its mind over here. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, now, if you're watching this show, there's a most likely you're like, Will, you have yet another show, a live stream show that you're doing? Well, I do, but I don't. If you're watching this on our Facebook Lives or you're watching this on YouTube and you're wondering what the hell happened to uh, acting up radio slash was podcast and now live stream thank you COVID. uh and you're wondering what the hell's going on uh here we are introducing the new live stream that's going to replace and make it so much more robust uh acting up live is now going to be uh, um, filmfestivallive.com and so the reason why I started doing this, by the way, is I'm working with a gentleman by the name of Sal in the East Coast. I'm West Coast. I feel like throwing down a gang sign when I say that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that Sal is a quite an amazing guy. I can't say his Italian name at all, so uh, I won't try. But Sal is an amazing guy with numbers and creative, and he, he was a professional actor as well. And we got together a meeting of the minds because, look, if you're anybody in the industry, uh, film festival is really kind of something that is has become it's become synonymous with just the industry because it, it is something that if you're uh, an aspiring actor, uh, producer, uh, writer, uh, all the things, there's so many uh, elements to this then you know that since the I'm going to say because I'm old enough to say this. Uh, back in the 80s when I started, that in the 90s when I was working at Fox Kids, I started seeing this thing called film festivals. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. But it's a little difficult for everybody to put it in a canister and send it. But now everything is digital. And if you don't have access and you're creative that does this stuff, a camera, uh, people that write, and you're not really versed at some of these things, then... I got news for you. You might want to consider a different hobby or a different vocation, a different job, because uh, this show will certainly encompass all of those things. And the reason why is because Sal has been able to, uh, I guess, for a lack of better words, wrangle in and help a lot of the film festivals around the world. So uh, he has a great website that you will see in a little bit. I'll show you a screenshot um, that really has a wonderful platform. I'm, I call it the the mini me of Netflix for independent films. A little long, but we'll work on that title. But I want to tell you something. Uh, boy, what's exciting about this is that uh, Sal went right for the top. And we try, you know, we sub, we sent out a big email saying we'd love to have you on the show. And uh, we're really kind of hitting in the beginning the film festivals themselves. And oh, by the way, I'm Will Roberts. If you're new to my broadcast, I'm a professional actor of 40 years. And you'll see that later in the show because um, I'll promote it. Uh, but the other part about it is, is that, um, you know, I've been radio, TV and interviewer for quite some time. So I'm very thrilled because he's allowed us to be able to hook up with some of the top uh, people in the industry, as I have, which I'll have casting directors. So this is a great show, directors. This is a great show for everybody in the industry. So that being said, uh, Sal got and sent me who responded back, which was quite a wonderful list of people who responded back. But, oh, boy, am I excited. Her name is Nina. And and, and Fiori, is that, she's nodding in the, yes, I got thumbs up in the green room. And uh, they are the Astoria uh, film festival. If you know film festivals, not only do they have an A that starts off at the top of the list, but they are at the top of the list. And they're quite a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful film festival, which, by the way, uh, COVID kicking out and putting in October, they will be back in full, uh, full gear. And I, I got to say, and we'll talk about this on the show, that there were some good things that happened because of COVID some bad things. And now everybody's got some other concerns about the stuff, but hope you're vaccinated. If you're not, stay away from me. Um, but the other part about it is, is that, um, 
you know, what's allowed us to do is you're looking at my studio, which I'm a live stream professional. I produce people's shows for them, hours of shows of content, but got tired of watching people doing their shows in their bathrooms, Zooms in your bathrooms. So I stepped up and because I produced radio and TV, showed people how to make a clock and give them some basic information, because let's be honest, this is not 1982. And you can grab your phone, which, by the way, I'm also Instagramming as we speak um, and doing all this stuff. And you can do it without having to have red cameras, black magics and so on. You just got to be smart about it because we are in control of our content. And with that being said, I'm going to introduce you, Nina. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with a little promo that they have. So hang tight. Watch this. And we'll be back in a moment. The Astoria Film Festival is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We produce an annual film festival that highlights short films, feature films, web series, and podcasts from filmmakers around the world, and hold meetups and smaller screenings throughout the year to support local filmmakers. Our founder and executive director, Nina Fiore, grew up in Astoria, New York, and worked in television and digital media production for many years with MTV, PBS, Viacom. Sundance Channel, and many others. She also worked in after-school education. Nina began the festival with the hopes of uniting students interested in careers in film, television, and digital media production with local experts in the field. The majority of proceeds from our festival go into creating education workshops for local schools, after-schools, and community centers. We also run a film fellows program where we provide work, internships, mentorships, and training for students ages 15 to 25 with an interest in film, television, and digital media production. Most of our programming is now done virtually via Zoom for ages 8 to 12, 13 to 18, and 15 to 25. If you'd like more information about our organization, please visit astoriafilmfestival.org. Thank you. <laughs> We expect you to do 10 dozen cookies the first time you come in. The second time you, we com you come in, I'm expecting 15 dozen. I absolutely love that because uh, you're showing such great community involvement. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome, I'm just going to call it by, everybody's my friend, so let's go by first name. Uh, Honor. And welcome to the show, Nina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Yeah, and, and look, uh, Sal, and you want to pronounce his last name, you can look in the comments. So he's out Ramandi, there. Ramandi. Good, good that you know that because I'm afraid to say it wrong. <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong. He's Italian. Yeah. Uh, let's, yes, wait, let's... We'll, we'll get your shoe size before we log off. <laughs> My concrete shoe size. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited to have you on here because, you know, one of the first things I would like to ask you, which I, I would like to ask every single person that decides to be founder of a film festival is, are you out of your mind? <laughs> um, most likely, yes. <laughs> I, I would definitely say that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about um, and we'll get into all the brass tacks about what is uh, film festivals and you know, what you expect and what you've been seeing. But let me ask you, let's talk about origin. When did it start? Is, is there, yeah. was there a particular thing you like, oh, by the way, we have a, a, a spare 501C hanging around. Uh, why don't we do a film festival? Let's talk about the origin. Um, well, we started in 2018, so we're pretty new actually. And um, I mean, relative to others on the scene. Um, and I was at the time working at the Boys and Girls Club locally, oh. and uh, that it's one of the largest um, after school providers in Queens. And I had a lot of youth who wanted to, <laughs> great Irish name, yes. A lot of youth who wanted to learn about filmmaking were interested. We're surrounded by television production studios and film production studios. Yeah. We, we yeah. you know, we're right between uh, Silver Cup and Kaufman. Now De Niro's putting a new studio. Uh, right near us as well. So 
I was thinking to myself, there have to be filmmakers in the area because there's so many studios, but how do I find them and bring them to the kids? And I myself had a background in television production and digital production. I'd been at Sesame Street and Viacom. Oh, awesome. For years, I had a special interest in children's television. So I, I was one of the people who helped launch the Noggin Channel, which was a children's television yes, station back in the day. Yep. And then uh, a lot of our, what we were tasked with at Viacom was coming up with interactive television ideas. So TRL was one of our babies. Um, Noggin was supposed to be kind of a very, um, you know, symmetry between online and on air, et cetera. And then I was there at the Boys and Girls Club as the education and communications director and the kids were asking for filmmaking, but I was mostly a producer. And it, when you're a producer in a larger organization, you don't necessarily know camera, you know, cinematography, you don't necessarily know editing. I could edit, but back, you know, where there were like avid stations that there was avid big as a room. Stations. Wow. Yes. And uh, you would get locked in there till like 2 a.m. You come out, you didn't know what day it was or <laughs> where you hey, were. Hey. If you start talking about cutting tape, I'm going to end this broadcast. Well, seriously, <laughs> you were going on about the canisters. And, you know, so one of my project, one of my clients, if you will, we were a group in Viacom that handled a lot of Viacom um, companies. And one of the companies I handled was Sundance. So the oh. channel, also the film festival. So, you know, I remember how it was back in the, and this was in the mid nineties. So yeah. I remember how it was. And we, in I think 98 or 99, me and my team were trying to do a live stream from the festival interviewing people in at 98 oh my. like can oh you imagine my. Holy, so that, that would be called stop animation it was, it was. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah it was it kept, it kept it kept going down you know we were literally on a dial up doing a live stream for like oh a major my. event yep yep i didn't realize i was bringing you on for comedy i didn't <laughs> I thought this was going to be just a fun little. So, so that's like when things started to pivot this year, like last year with all of the lockdown and, and COVID and, and whatnot, I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm prime for this. I've been doing live streams since the mid nineties. I've been remote working since the mid nineties, like yeah. no biggie. Right. Just, yeah. just with the pandemic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, <laughs> that's funny. So, that's funny. You talk about that because, you know, um, I started out uh, just, you know, uh, at Fox because I was a Fox Kids Club host for about seven years. Uh, Fox Kids when Fox cared about kids. Anyway, um, did I say that? Anyway, uh, but now it's Pleasure Island. And now it's pleasure. Anyway, but the point is, is that I remember uh, the, the stations brought me in in, in Central California because they're like, uh, I was I was playing on an iPhone like three. I don't know what it was like. It was like two cups in a string. And then I was on a IB. I was on a PC and I was crashing it because I was you know not in Avid and I was like trying to render. And people are like, "What the hell are you doing? What are you doing?" And then Blair Witch came out and everybody's like, "What are you doing?" Uh, you're shooting things through your underwear, whatever. <laughs> the point is, is that yes. uh, it, it has really changed a lot. And I have to tell you that uh, it's great to talk to you about this because you're old school. OG. I, love I am it. very OG. Yeah, very OG. <laughs> I am sadly very OG. Yes. I mean, I, I was um, so, you know, education. So obviously was a huge reason to start the festival. I thought, how do I find the filmmakers? And I thought, hmm. If I throw a festival, the filmmakers will come, right? So <laughs> if you build was, it, they will come. Theory. Was, so the, the festival was my cornfield, and uh, and you know it it worked for that purpose. And I and I was like, maybe I can kind of talk the filmmakers into working with the kids, and they very much did that. And um, but then I also realized the filmmaker community locally really needed support and wanted support too. So sure. really, everything just grew organically as I saw needs, you know, so as as people kind of came to me and said, hey, you know, I, I grew up here. I was born and raised in, in Astoria, Queens. And, um, you know, so I know a lot of the restaurants. I know a lot of the people and people filmmakers would come up and say, oh, you know, I need a you know, I need a phone booth. Do you know where I can find one? <laughs> or I need a, I need a bar. Do you have any I'd like a phone booth. Yeah, I'd like for a voiceover. I have a voiceover studio. What a great! I've always wanted a phone booth. One thing that you're saying that is really kind of like, uh, kind of cued me off is is that 
you have the community coming to you and asking for different things along with uh, perhaps asking for either training or education. Is the Astoria Film Festival interested and are you, uh, which I saw, you can see sort of in that trailer, are you providing any educational classes, master classes, whatever, for uh, the people in the community, not only in the film festival window time, but around the, uh, the, the year? Oh, yes. I mean, one of the reasons I made it a 501c3 nonprofit was so I could apply for grants in order to do film education programming. And then um, we started that almost immediately before we got the grants and just started to, uh, you know, do it in the hope that we would get grants to cover what we'd done. And it's worked out, knock on wood. Um, yeah. But, you know, we 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 threw a summer camp a film camp before covid oh great uh, we had we had kids from age six to age 17 i think in the in the camp doing different things um and then i actually was volunteering at a local high school teaching bringing in some of the filmmakers from the festival to talk to the high school kids about their career paths and just right. trying to you know I, I i was a i grew up here working class immigrant family and then i wanted to go into you know, television production. And it wasn't really an easy transition. Like I didn't have any connections. I didn't know that world. And I know a lot of the kids around here, it's a primarily immigrant neighborhood. Um, it's it's obviously gentrified a lot since I've been a kid, but it, there's still, you know, enough um, community here that could use support. Sure. So I really, I really wanted to kind of give those kids the, connections and knowledge that I didn't have going into the industry. Right. Um, so one thing, it sounds like from what everything you've said that you literally probably do this 24 hours a day, um, along with the <laughs> fact that uh, it sounds like you are a one woman band and that's not true. You have a, a, a staff or people who volunteer who help you put this all together, correct? We have a, an amazing board, um, which is primarily female like there's nine of us and I, one male who's my husband <laughs> so okay. i forced him forced him to be on it um but yeah the the uh the staff the board has been really helpful and and they made up mostly of local mo mothers uh one oh. is a prof one is a professor of education one's a prof professor at nyu tish one runs a um, accessibility um company where she kind of makes events accessible uh, and then, and then I brought in some friends of mine from the industry. One's an entertainment lawyer. One's um, an executive right. at MTV, where I worked for for many years. So you know, they've given us good connections. You know, we have a lot of guests come to speak to our classes, and then we also have guests come to speak to our interns and our film fellows. So just trying to connect everybody together so that these kids have some connections going forward. Right, and you can see on the screen right now the, the screenshot of our the, website, yeah, website, which you can go to storyoffilmfestival.org, o r g, uh, and uh, very excited that you're actually going to be back in person and doing it. But let's talk about the um, well, we, we, we better, did it last year in person too. Be, oh, good. Oh, you did? Yeah, we were one of the few. Six of you <laughs> separated, but by literally no. myself because yeah. I didn't want to put anyone else in danger. So yeah. but we did about eight different events throughout the month of October while it was running online. I ran around town with my blow up screen and a projector and, wow. you know, and, yeah. And just um, kind of did and, and the, my step and repeat banner and just kind of set up shop wherever outside I could fully mass under 20 people in attendance. I was like literally running around sanitizing people <laughs> throughout the, all the events but I was I, determined to do it. <laughs> I have a graphic for next year's film festival. Remember, it's a black and white, but there's a picture of a man with uh, all the instruments attached to their body, the one man band. I think that we should put your face on that. I and feel very- The story yes. of film festival, here we go. Um, one thing that I, uh, you know, I wanna talk about the Zoom element and the uh, COVID element in the sense that uh, it, we know that well going forward in october you're going to have both of these in line and now it's much more acceptable when someone says like i have to tell you when i started doing these interviews i started on skype sure. and then i would and then i would have to edit them and do lower thirds and you can see other name and then um i started asking casting directors and directors and people like you to come on they go you mean on camera 
I'm like, yeah, cause like we're in the industry and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't get on camera. Well now it's perfectly fine yeah. because thank you Zoom, which I had stock in it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that it is now more acceptable, which is not even more acceptable. I, you know, in my studio, I do what three, four, sometimes five uh, self tapes a week and send them off thank god because i live two and a half hours from la and back and forth i don't mind the drive but i don't mind sitting in my studio going to be or not to be uh, absolutely. But, absolutely but let's talk about the the um that that level has it been a, a blessing sort of in disguise in the sense that your the astoria film festival.org uh, is not only something that you physically can go to but you're are you reaching people outside the area Oh, absolutely. I mean, from the very beginning, we had, uh, you know, I posted on Film Freeway as our submissions place, and um, we were surprised at how many countries submitted. And uh, people often ask me, oh, do I have to be from a story to submit? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, like, it's, it's all good. That's funny. Um, when people that I think yeah, kind of like, no, well, I mean, do you have to live in Tribeca to submit to Tribeca? No, but you know, people... No. <laughs> I, it was just an interesting. No, they'll take to... your money. They'll take your money. No yeah. matter. I have. We I've done a couple of shorts, and I. I pr can trust you. Trust me that they've taken my money on film, yeah. whatever that thing is, uh, all day long. Uh, you know, so we we did have a pretty good reach, but the pandemic definitely extended our reach beyond what we'd had previously. We, yeah. Because yeah. immediately we, you know, so we did the kids. So, so I, in addition to the kids workshops, we do a little festival for them where we make them the VIPs. We give them red carpet interviews, the whole nine yards. So I, they were really disappointed about missing that because of COVID. So luckily I found there was a local diner that decided to put up a drive-in in their parking lot as a way to get them through COVID during um, last spring. So we, we, you know, rented from them and basically gave the kids their mini festival as a drive-in. So they couldn't get out. We couldn't, we interviewed them in Zoom because we couldn't obviously do red carpet interviews in person at the time, but uh, it was really a savior. And then we also, you know, opened up a quarantine films category. And huh. we, that was the highest, um, you know, submissions were to the quarantine films and they came from everywhere. Usually right. we have about 23 to 26 countries submit. Last year we had about, you know, 40 countries submit. It was just a, like every country had a quarantine film because, you know, we said like it, it can be in your house. It can be on an iPhone. Like it doesn't, I think the, once you lower the standard of like, oh, I have to do, use a red, right? And have oh, it well yeah. produced. Yeah. It, it it included a lot more people and we, we got some right. really interesting submissions mostly horror like yeah. all the quarantine films were horror <laughs> films i just want to say well that which you I know thought was fitting. perfect it's perfect <laughs> and, and but even I, but... The, the kids films the, like i asked the kid the kids determine their own films and then i help them put it together but the ideas come from them and literally i think all but two of our films the past three years have been horror films That's from, it's from the seven-year-olds you from know the, yeah so. the, the donut hole that ate uh, anyway arcadia you know uh it, you know I'll tell you, it, it is something that people don't realize but you know when you hold up your phone and and i was talking about producing things i produced a, a short uh, when i was in pernambuco brazil shooting a netflix film for 46 days and what myself and the other lead in the film uh it said hey let's go shoot something i shot a a, a single that's actually how i got to meet sal really uh, i shot uh -huh. um a, an eight minute or 11 minute short called signal and we've received 20 awards and i got two best actor awards thank you but yeah. the point is is that it was shot on a 5S, uh, 5C, uh, 5S, sorry. And we shot it all on that in Pernambuco. And we were, and uh, um, Diogo Morgado, who's pretty well known, he played Jesus and so on. But yep. he, um, he, we shot this all, he's like holding up a tripod and we're doing shots in the middle of the foot. It, it's quite a good film and it's all done on this. So if you think you have some, an idea, yes. stop thinking yeah. about it and do it. Yeah. Uh, what brings me up to something really quickly. I want to bring it up to you is, is that someone said, Robert, who I thought it said De Niro, um, <laughs> uh, Robert De Niro said, how can we support nice. this program? A couple of million well, dollars would be awesome, De Niro. So that's well, a question. So. Um, how can they support, if you don't mind me asking, how could someone support? I mean, I, 
haven't even done fundraising this year because I know everybody is struggling. Robert's but if anybody, start. what was that? Robert's going to start it. <laughs> yeah. But if anybody would like to donate, we have a donate button on our website. Um, funds are always helpful. We often pay the um, you know older students that we work with, so the 15 to 25 year olds who have some film experience to work with the younger kids, and we prioritize taking older kids who need whose families we recognize could use that support. So, um, you know, I'm very much, you know, I grew up here. I love this place. And um, it's the only place I feel fully comfortable. <laughs> so I am determined to help it out as best I can. And, you know, especially the pandemic really hit Queens hard as you know, yeah. you know, so um, yeah, you know, we're currently we're doing a film, for for example, with the nurses at Mount Sinai Hospital. Oh, cool. So I just decided, you know, I'd put it out there and see if anyone was interested. And they started to trickle in little by little. And now I have like a full group. And um, they are, you know, it's they're we're doing it similar to PBS StoryCorps, where they'll, oh, they'll cool. give it their interview. And then we'll have yeah. actually one of our um, student f film fellows will be animating for us. So um, heart-wrenching a lot of a lot of their experiences through COVID but the, uh, the point of it was to give them some therapy in a way let them tell their story and sure. so you were saying before like if you have a story to tell like that you just can't not tell or if you're not finding yourself represented correctly in the media right or if you're if you're not getting the gigs you want to get write your gig right write and film your gig right Love like it. that's that's my favorite thing to see is that that thing that comes out of people that you know it's from their like inner core <laughs> and they had to share it with the world and um and that's what makes the festival so wonderful like that's those people and their films are what make it so wonderful right we're going to take a small break and when we come back we'll be talking with nina again just to wrap things up a little bit can you stick around for a couple more minutes Absolutely. I love it. We're going to take a small break. When we come back, I promise you we're going to talk about, you know, what Nina wants to talk about. And uh, and uh, we'll go from that. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can get us on our website and all that other fun stuff. Everything's going to be developed. There is a platform that we have that allows you to see these film festivals you sign up and so on. And then basically you can see some of the film festival shorts, which is awesome. I'm calling it the mini me of um, Netflix or Hulu or whatever. So hang tight. We'll be right back after this small little uh, mention. All right, so here it is, uh, a website. It's called 4MovieRentals.com. Uh, this is a good friend of mine. I do a lot of cop and, and spy and weapon stuff because if you don't know me, I have a couple world records with my guns and my whips and my ropes, and I'm a professional cowboy. But I work with this gentleman. He does a lot of SWAT stuff and music videos and here in Hollywood. So, But there we have, or he has, stuff all around the United States that we can get, whether it's costumes, props, uniforms, anything having to do with medical, uh, military, or police, or SWAT. So all you need to do is go to 4 Check it out. I think that um, it, it, we can help you anywhere you want to be. Uh, so that is my little plug and mention on that. So that means we're coming back to the show and back to Nina. Um, Nina, I just want to give you the last bit of uh, any sort of information or uh, sort of a focus that you want to give with the Astoria Film Festival uh, org. Uh, and let us know if there's anything that you're thinking that needs to be said, like you said, with the people producing stuff. Uh, anything you want to word? I, I call this a, the free advice section, the best four letter word in the English language, free. Uh, so give us a little free advice. I don't care whether or not it's life, love, happiness, film, whatever, how to eat a donut. It doesn't matter. <laughs> What's your thoughts or questions or anything? Sure. Um, well, our festival's coming up in October. We're actually just getting towards our close, closing our submissions in a few days. So if you have something out there, send it to us. We'd love to see it. Um, if you can't afford the entrance fee, contact me and I will <laughs> help you out. But, you know, as Sal is saying, I'm always asked by filmmakers if there's a budget minimum to enter your festival. No, we do not have that. No. We, we really, I mean, we're all about accessibility. We're all about telling stories of people, especially those who are, have been historically not included in the things, in things, in media. Um, and 
like you said, with your film that you've shot with your iPhone, the story is more important than the camera. I, I know often in the, um, so if you have a story to tell and it comes from your soul, like the depths of your soul, you will find your people if you put your story out there and you will help people by putting your story out there. So somebody asked me last year, for example, during the quarantine, like, do you think there are certain stories that shouldn't be told during the quarantine? Like, do they seem not right to tell at this point? And I was like, seriously, anything anybody needs to do to remain sane during this very not sane time is okay yeah. <laughs> and, and welcomed and encouraged. And I think filmmaking is a writing, filmmaking, the whole process is such a great therapy. It's been for me. I mean, the community, basically, we, we got together with folks from the community in Zoom as soon as I could get my bearing straight, so maybe around April of 2020, and we just started to have meetings and started to create a documentary that, you know, we ended up having the film fellows edit, right, together. Um, just there's something about film, creating film that is so healing. So take that time and, and do that for yourself. Write, write your story, shoot your story, and send it to us. And hopefully we'll see you in October. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I love the fact that you're making it very clear to people that uh, you really will take, <laughs> you'll take, and that doesn't sound right, you'll take anything uh, because it is a way, and it sounds like you really kind of started out this whole process as a, you know, a community effort thing. So um, it's great that you're allowing people on all levels to submit something because, you know, thing is, is that when we get people together in a group, like if we are hanging out together uh, and we get like-minded people together, some of them are going to be looking for mentors. And, oh, yeah. and, and, and one of the biggest problems I see in the industry, in our world, I'll say, is, is that it's tough um, nowadays because you can just go on YouTube and you can go like, so it, that's my, one of my pet peeves is that everybody's a, a writer, everybody's a director, everybody's an actor, everybody's a, a reporter, everybody's a, a radio, ho oh, well, not radio. Uh, you know, everybody does everything. All it takes is, you know, uh, going onto YouTube and watching some video problem with that is is that talk to your doctor when you go in and go look i was talking to dr google and they said that i'm gonna die uh <laughs> there is a place to um be very clear about in this industry that you want to go to the like-minded professionals that know what they're talking about and you yeah. said you put together people on the board and and your your, your community from mtv but blah, 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 blah. networking you're getting out of it and number two the experience of what they're doing and obviously listening to you talk about stuff you are very you are very uh kind and low key on what you've done but i can tell by you saying avid sweet and all the things that you've done that i bet you're a lot more savvy at stuff that you're that you're saying and also oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you're very good you think i can tell i mean i I've, I've served as a mentor for a lot of people but also you know for example all of our judges for our films this year our past festival winners, you know, so oh. we, we bring that we, we, we don't let you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're That's in our cool. festival and you want to be a part of things, we want you to come talk to our kids. If you need jobs, we, we try to get you work with, uh, you know, we try to connect people. There's at least three films that were made because of connections made at the festival. Um, that's the kind of community I wanted to, uh, create. And that's what I'm working on. Keep keeping going. Robert, Great. we do, yeah. we do stream. Actually, all our films will be online. We'll have the, the whole festival will be online, um, and you know it, the ticket will be reasonable because I I'm all about reasonable. <laughs> well, the good thing about that as well is that so you know that what Sal and I are doing is is that with a, with his mini me um, Netflix is is that we have a platform and we're uh, going to be opening up a brand new. Uh, a more elaborate platform to help the film festivals because not everybody let's face it not everybody has the wearalls or overalls uh to be able to um facilitate all of the technological parts of this and also because of what we're doing here at filmfestivallive.com and the show um we want to be able to help out as well so we're moving towards a model that allows us to be able to post everybody's you know the winners and other films as well just because look look at i used to not watch tv and film a lot my wife go when we got together almost 20 years ago she goes why, why don't you ever why, i don't get it i'm like 
well, I don't know. I just, I'm usually rehearsing or I'm in a, a filming or I'm in a show. And, and so anyway, I know that I'm a bad actor for saying what I just said, but the, now there's so many platforms and we have to fill those platforms. And so again, we're here helping folks like Nina and uh, the founding director. And anyway, uh, so with that being said, Nina, I can't even tell you how excited I am to have you the first guest on the switch over redo of acting up radio slash podcast slash live stream. So, my okay. honor. Yeah. Totally and, my honor. and you're and you're awesome possum. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Will. All right, hang out in the green room. We'll talk in a second. I'm going to end the show, and it looks a little bit like this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for hanging out on the show and watching this. Again, if you're interested, you can certainly go. Uh, our site will be up a, a momentarily, um, of course, filmfestivallive.com. And um, I had it on my uh, screen, the other platform, but we'll send all this. You, What you want to do is make sure if you're on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, so, look, uh, I'm really enjoying this. Hey. Hey, Sal, do me a favor and type the uh, URL again for the platform to watch the movies. That would be really great. Sal's in the wings um, out there typing. He is my <laughs> social media dude. But I just want to end this by saying to everybody, look, I appreciate you coming to this new, uh, you know, redo of acting up live stream and now into the film festivals. I, I really am excited by all the possibilities of stuff that's happening and getting the word out about film festivals, because I think in some ways they're underrated. And quite honestly, being here in Hollywood, I, at some point, what's happened is, is that film festival has almost become what I would call uh, the Tupperware of the 2000s, which is like, oh, yeah, so I've got a film festival and I want a fundraiser and I want you to give me money. It's like when I was in the 70s with my mom and she lost all of her friends because she kept saying, I'm going to have a Tupperware party. And they would be like, oh, please, June, don't have another one. Anyway, uh, but it, by raising awareness of what we're doing on this, I just think it's absolutely essential because it allows people to be creative. And here's the other thing I want to end the show by saying is, is that if you're doing this and you do it and you have a passion, I just got goosebumps, not because it's cold in here, but because when I think about what I do every day, it's hard for me not to wake up at four in the morning. It's hard for me not, I do anyway, I, don't, I think I get like four hours of sleep every night every, and that's the best time for me to be creative. But if you're like me and Nina and anybody else that's doing this for the love of it, I, but I mean, I would like to get paid, don't get me wrong. Um, but the point is, is that uh, if you're doing this, please stop overlooking the possibilities of creating yourself because here's what I tell actors all the time. If you're an actor and you're thinking to yourself, Oh man, I went to another audition. And now not only because of COVID, but in general, that in normal call, uh, like an audition or breakdown is about 4,000 people submitting sometimes. And when you think about that, number one, early bird gets the worm, get your stuff in, almost swore immediately. Don't procrastinate. Second thing is, is that when you're going to people's auditions or you're going and working on other people's films, whether you're shooting, directing or whatever, I just said the key thing, it's other people's stuff. So the chances of you really shining uh, within a 20 year span, it becomes very, very small because you're not really doing what you want to do. You know how you take care of that? You produce your own shit. And so the fact of the matter is, is by doing your own stuff and saying, look, but I, I know I play a really good guy that, you know, kills people on film, but I personally spent, you know, 30 years as a comedian falling over stuff like Dick Van Dyke or whatever. And so now because of my stuff, I have this image of like, oh, I'm going to be the cowboy and the whatever. The only way to change that is by taking control yourself and then submitting for uh, film festivals. One thing it does that's more important that I don't think anybody realizes, confidence. Because this business is about confidence. If you think it's about anything else, I'm here to tell you, it's not. And when you get this enough, you start going, oh, cool. Or you don't get this enough, you go, I need to rethink that. So I'm telling you right now, starting off this new little venture, live streaming, on this wonderful platform of filmfestivalslive.com. Uh, I, I say to you and I challenge you that if you could possibly think about um, creating stuff on your own, you're gonna be better off. But more importantly, grab a team. Know what you do best, grab people that work together, 
and make things and submit them to the story story a story film festival.org ladies and gentlemen appreciate your time and your space in your head uh, i'm going to leave you with um a little self-promotion this is my 46 second i'm calling it a flash demo and i'm recommending that actors do stuff like this i think you'll love it it's quick and you'll see some things you might know we'll see you next week Detective Gennaro, I need to speak with Rex Wilson. Rex is already out there on the speedway for his practice run. You know what I mean. Now let me see your shotgun. In here, cool it down. <laughs> Just like your old man, huh? Is there a problem, soldier? I'm asking you a question, Lieutenant. Running in clown shoes. This is gonna be fun. Time! I hope they need more time. Oh, 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 oh,